Shalom, Salama, Siemi, Shalom. Greetings, my brothers and sisters that are my fellow Israelites through the bloodline or through being grafted in under Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. And I wanna greet all those from around the world. We here in America, if, if you're listening to me, Chances are, chances are, most of my audience are Americans, or in the, or in the West. You know, either Caribbean or in the UK. You understand where a majority of us, and what a majority of us are seeing. So, if you look at things right now, they're trying to, the media. It's trying to say everything is is calming down. Everything is is running its course. Things are getting back to normal. And as we see that perception, what they're trying to perceive doesn't necessarily meet reality. And so the reason that that is it's plain and simple. It's called fear management. So when you're trying to manage fear, you're coming with the expectation that what is being said will resonate and then you can kind of create your own reality. But how many times have we seen that? How many times have we understood that's the witchcraft or the spells that has been over our people? We, we see that with the, the very same nature of, well, you wanna know what? You're not good enough. You wanna know what? You have that application in, you're not good enough. You have that degree, but you don't have the job, you're not good enough. You, you have all these things that we had asked and had told you to do to reach that level of success, but guess what? You're not good enough. And so the question now remains, why am I not good enough in this society? But then I see counterparts that may not be the same as me. They're getting into these places. They're getting these doors open. They're getting all these things that we were told to work for and we would be able to have our seat at the table. So I'm not going to go and delve into this message to, to talk about, you know, well, it's racism here and racism there and this and that. No, no, no. It's about what your expectations are in this world. See, the way I see it, we're racing towards the finish line. And, and this finish line isn't a finish line in terms of, well, everything's going to fall apart. Everything's going to go to crap, you know, all this and all that. And, and then you have to realize who says who's to, who says this is what is going to happen. Things are going to fall apart like this. Things are going to move like that. Now, as we see this, yeah, this world is falling apart. The system is falling apart. That's why I don't like to say the world ain't going nowhere. Even when we get up out of captivity, the world's not going anywhere. It's just that when we get up on that of captivity, the system of captivity, oh yeah, that's ending. That's ending. But you have to understand, in order for something to end, 
you have to realize where it began. Because once you can start to realize how things began, you can start to see there has to be a catalyst that was there that allowed for these things to happen. If I know who I am, whether you have a bloodline, whether you are of the the you're grafted in under under the blood of Yeshua Hamashiach. You're understanding, okay, there's something that happened. There is a catalyst that happened that made things the way that they are. And 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 if these these folks that are now claiming to be Israelites and, and they're claiming that we've had 400 years and they're claiming that now everything is is coming to a head because this nation is under the system of being judged. Well, if I'm the, if I'm that nation being judged, it's quite simple. I'm not being judged anymore. Why? I have the vaccine. It's on its way. Don't worry, things are going to come back to normal. <laughs> you got to remember, they're trying to bring things back to normal so quickly that they're not actually understanding what is going on outside of the United States. You know, I, I was on a really great conversation with um, discussion thing panel on Hebrewsphere.com with uh, with Second Exodus. And I'm not going to go too long winded into, you know, when people think that Christ is going to come back and, you know, when's all this stuff happening and when's this happening. Because I, I have to honestly tell you, this is just me, personally speaking. And I even had this discussion amongst my family. There's a lot of prerequisites that the Most High provides when he talks about coming back to his people, to his kingdom. See, let me just be, let me just be real, real quick. Let me just be honest. Okay. Cause I know I'm getting some new subscribers and you new subscribers never heard these things. Cause it's just going to be mind blowing and shattering and uh, who, who knows, but you're going to learn something today. And this is in the scriptures. You're going to learn that, listen, Christ does not come back until we are back in the land, until we are living in the land of unwalled villages. Because why? What will happen then? Then what? An evil thought will occur. For what? For the nations. To do what? Let's go ahead and take them captive again. Let's go ahead and let's subdue them again. This was something. Let, let's put this into con context and let's put this into the inf inference of what we see. Because this is the whole culmination of what I was talking about with, with the rapture doctrine and why the rapture doctrine, if you're going to get raptured, you would have been raptured a long time ago. You probably would have been raptured at the end of the 400 years. Earlier this year, you should have been raptured. At least, by, at least March would have been your departing date. 
Because now you have these pestilences, now you have these plagues, now you have all these things that are falling on folks. But you have to understand where we are seeing and what we are seeing, we're seeing the end of our captivity. We're seeing the end of this kingdom. And, and if you don't believe that a kingdom can't end and begin, think about Cyrus. The Medes and the Persians. What did they do? They came through. And one night, they said they left the doors open. Here you go. Walk right in. Make yourselves comfortable. Don't you want to, aren't you going to put up a fight? Nope, no arrow is going to be shot. What, what, weren't, weren't you going to, nope. You're good. Tell us where you want your things and, and we'll keep an eye on out for them. It was like that. So when we look at these things and we say, well, I don't know, I, I, I think that 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 the most high is going to have to do this and, and he's going to have to do that. And and and, and you know, we, we have all of these expectations. That's not even scripture. Because you want to know why? Our expectations were, were wrapped up in Eurocentric doctrine. And when we had to understand the Eurocentric doctrine, it was indoctrination for us as the bloodline as much as it was indoctrination for the Gentiles. You can't have a prison system running if you do not have the guards. Let me let me explain this to you. You cannot have a prison system running if you do not have the guards. Now, when we woke on up, guess who was waking up? The guards. Let me just be, let me just be blunt. And if you're a guard, you're now trying to wonder, well, what's my fate? Now it's easy to say, especially if you're a guard, it's easy to say, well, you know what? I don't really care. I I, I don't really think that it's it's even real. Because you got to remember, this is what they're going through. They're going through the denial stage. We went through the same stages as the people when we were, when we were awakening. Okay, we're the people. I don't think we're the people. Oh, man. Yeah, we are the people. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is what's happening. It's denial. It's shock. Well, shock, denial, then acceptance. We have been making the claims. They're, they were shocked about, appalled. We saw that when Ice Cube was making his tweets, when Nick Cannon was um, talking about that. When Deshaun Jackson was talking about that, now we just see, have seen recently Lord Jamar talking about it. It's not like it's it's a taboo subject that's made up as a myth. It's not. It's just now it's 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 starting to be understood that there was a deliberate attempt to hide our identity. 
And, and that attempt was so profound that it has worldwide implications. But, but I want to say for us right now, we're currently going through a lot of things. Our people are going through a lot of things. We understand that. Because we see all these things shifting. We, we're, we're, a lot of us are unemployed. A, a lot of us have, are, 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 are very unstable in terms of even the, the present job market, the job situation. So with that, I wanted I wanted to touch in with Philippians four, starting at verse six. Be careful, or be anxious, for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, the Most High. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think of these things. And now it's Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. This is really where I, I came up. The, the, the Most High had put in, had, had 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 talked to me. The Holy Spirit had talked to me and said, "Look, this is what you what you're going to talk about: managing expectations. We're focusing on the pure. We're focusing on the things that are true, that are honest. This is it. Can you imagine?" Just think about this. In your awakening, you're doing your, your heavenly due, due, due diligence. Your heavenly due diligence. Hey, think about this. Think about the, the pure. Think about the honest. Why? Because if you're thinking about these things, you, you're thinking about what the Most High wants you to think about. And that's perfected through His Son. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. So when you're understanding of our needs and of our wants, all we have to say is thank you, Father. Thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach. Because we're getting ready to get out of this circumstance yeah there's a lot of us that want jobs i understand that but i also understand listen there's a lot of things happening there's a lot of things coming that that, that little vaccine thing that they're talking about well they're going to try and do their emergency um stuff I'm hearing December December 10th it's not that long it's not that far technically it's about a little over two weeks from now so imagine what's gonna happen in a little over two weeks we don't know because we don't understand what the time frame that the Most High really has for us. But we understand that the time is exceptionally close. 
The time is exceptionally close. We understand that as everything is getting closer and closer, we 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 do the opposite. No, Lord, I know that things are, are moving along, but you want to know what, Father, I need to see something. I need to I need to be taken care of right now, Father. I, I need things to 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 work out right now. And I'm not saying that that people have been saying, well, we we want it right now. There's been things that we've been doing with for years. I have. I'm waiting for things to to be a culmination of this era. Because most of my prayers are wrapped up in our deliverance from captivity. I know I know that's when most of my prayers will definitely be answered. And I know just like a lot of you all, we're on the same predicament in this spiritual boat ride. Because that's how the Most High wanted these things. We were going to go through this all together. Whether or not you're working, whether or not you, you're, you're doing good, whether or not you have money in the account, it doesn't matter. You're still in the same spiritual war zone as the rest of us. Because you now understand, listen, if you did have money in the bank, You know, at any moment, monetary policy or things of that nature can make your money worthless. And if you're struggling with only having pennies in the bank, then you know you're really just a hand's breadth away from death. So in all, we're, we have all, all these needs. We have all these wants. But it's really the most high that's going to take care of everything for us in the end. And he's already doing that. Trust me, we're, he's working right now. I never say, oh, well, the most high isn't working. I don't believe that he's doing. No, no. Mm -mm. You wonder why? Because I've seen him work too many times before. I've seen him move too many times before. Personally, in my life, I've seen him move. I've seen him move when my back was against the wall. And, and because I've seen his power being demonstrated, I know that now, my faith has to notch up just a little bit more. Think about this. One person on Hebrews here said, yeah, we're, we're at the sea. Israel is literally staring into the sea. And I'm telling you this, there's a reason why he's not able to, he is able. Let me rephrase that. There's a reason why, why the Most High is not choosing to demonstrate his power like he had demonstrated his power in Egypt. And that's because you have to remember there's a semblance or a resemblance of godliness, even though, even though they practice wickedness. So remember, they may not be serving the same God of our ancestors, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they will realize when a miracle is being performed in front of their eyes that they repent. See, you have to think about 
what the word does in certain cases, a lot of folks are never given opportunities to repent. And that's how God designs things. That's how the Most High designs things. We've seen it. Moses, pray to the Lord your God. So so he can restore me. So he can restore this land. Right? Get those plagues off of me. Pray to the Lord your God so he can get these plagues off of me. Pray to the Lord your God so he can, you know, um, move or remove these plagues. There's no repentance. But see, the way things are done here, there's a lot more going on outside the United States than there is going inside this country. And there's a lot more movement happening that we're not going to see happening, but it's happening right now. So even though it may feel like things are looking challenging, even though it may feel like things are looking very awkward, we're realizing that we're getting to that moment where we're on the last stage. But you also have to remember, see, the physical things that are happening in this country have been labeled a spiritual blindness for the others. Now, there are Gentiles that are awakened and they're seeing it and they understand it and, and they're making their declarations known. Hey, this is what's happening because this is what they're doing to, to the Most High's people. His, his spiritual people, his not just spiritual people, his physical people. The covenant that was made with their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant that was made with David. The covenant that was made for Israel, that, you know, once we, once we repent, once we cry out and we ask the Most High to save us, he'll rescue us and he'll turn us and he'll bring us back into our beautiful land. We understand that there's 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And we've been crying out. So imagine if our petitions had been made known to the Most High. Do you think that he's just sitting there saying, nah, forget it? Uh, maybe a little bit. I'm not quite ready yet. Uh, do I have to? No. He's saying, okay, my, my, my people have been crying on out for me. And I remembered what? The covenant that I made with their forefathers. That's what he said when he talked to Moses. When he talks to us right now in this present day, in this present generation, that's what he's been saying. Here's the thing, the Most High doesn't do the talking. He's working through his people. Why? Because I'm going to use my people to what? To condemn them. Doesn't he always? See, at first, I'm going to use a man. I'm going to use a, a man. Now I'm going to use them. That's Jeremiah 30. That's Isaiah 14. 
That's that's Zechariah. 11 and 5. And and the scriptures go on and on and on. See so you we redemption through Christ, through Yeshua HaMashiach, that's one thing. You will have salvation. But you're not going to have the kingdom. Because what was that? Away from me. I never knew you. Because you never knew me or my people. So when we see these things, we look at things and we have to start evaluating what is really good and what is really pleasant for us. Through, through, through things from the carnal. Is that really my salvation? Is that really my, my need, my want? So we're taking a look at that. We're understanding that. No, no, I don't, I don't think that that's going to be the case. No, no, I, I don't believe that that's going to be what I want. See, we have to start understanding. We want to have something more than what American can offer. We want to have something more than what this world can offer us. See, we want to have something that is an eternal value, not something with with, with where the moth can eat and destroy, where the canker worm can get through and, and lay waste. No, we want something that's eternal. Because you got to remember, this is what this is what and how Babylon functions. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you all the nice things that don't last. And now with all these nice things that haven't lasted, because here's the thing, it, it's not able to save them. Because only the Most High can save. So when we look at these things, when we're seeing our expectations, especially when we're seeing them in the prophetic and we see them in the natural, we, we have to be very careful that we continue on ensuring that it is the most high that gets the praise and the glory. This is how we 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 fight through this. This is actually how we win the battle. Because a lot of people don't want to tell you, look, the moment that you actually start saying you know the fight belongs to the most high and he will fight And we start praising and worship and celebrating the fact that he is fighting for us. When we start looking and seeing with our spiritual eyes how he is fighting for us. Well, you want to know what? When you when when everybody, whenever you see that you're winning, nobody stands still when they're winning. I'm winning in a fight. Let me just stand still. No. When when you're winning in a fight, you want to know what people do? You start shouting louder. You start getting more hyped.
I know when I was playing basketball, look, the moment that you're blowing them on out, you're, you're shouting. Yeah, this is a blowout. You're not just quiet. You're not sounding defeated or looking defeated because when you're defeated, you're quiet. You're saying hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I'm not defeated. Thank you, Father. That you're moving. That you're working. Thank you, Father, that you're fighting our battles. Because this was never a physical fight. And when we thought that we're always trying to fight in the physical, it was never a fair fight. Think about this. It was never a fair fight for us. Even when we would try to defend ourselves, it was never a fair fight. Why wouldn't it be a fair fight? Because you you were doing what? You were just trying to battle in the natural. Well, I should have been able to protect, to protect myself. Any common, any person with, 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 with common sense would say you can defend yourself, but how come that, that, that same standard isn't applied to us? Because it's, it, it was never applied to us. You cannot save yourself or defend yourself against a who? against your captors. You had to have your control officers, your prison officers be able to do the job in the spiritual arena. So when you're thinking that, well, I can, I should be able to defend myself like a normal or regular person. We look at it like it's crazy. Well, that, that, that makes sense to me. No, it's not supposed to make sense to you. It was supposed to be to where you were always going to be down in this thing. You were never going to get on out without the Most High's help in anything. And as sad as this is for most people that's listening, well, what do you mean? You know, I, I can do this, I can do that. Go ahead, try it. <laughs> you still ain't out of captivity. But the best thing that we've never had in years that we've been here is understanding how to actually operate in captivity. Oh man, you're operating in the path of righteousness. Can't touch you. Oh, you're operating with where the most high is, is moving. They can't touch you. So that's really where we have to start understanding. Just because we're managing expectations, it doesn't mean that this fight is lost. We're winning this fight. Trust me. Ooh. We're winning it. Trust the most high. We're winning it. I'd rather you trust the most high than you trust me. <laughs> Cause I'm a I'm fallible, man. I'm a man. I'm fallible. You know, I'm gonna be knowing this saying, hey, look, at the end of this, look, I'll have my my stuff on cassettes, on CDs. <laughs> For a nice love donation gift of $499.99. <laughs> I'm going to try to visit your area. But before I do so, I need to get me 
a private plane because you know I can't be up in this system. You know, the, the enemy going to try and take me out. No. I know my expectations. I know what the what the most high needs of me and, and, and is requiring of me. We all have our part to play. I just wanted to be bold enough to say, listen, Father, if you're for me, who can be against me? Oh, yeah, and I've had to pay in the, in the, in the, the carnal. I've had to pay in the physical. But you know what? I said it, it doesn't matter because as long as I have breath and I can say hallelujah, then guess who has me? The Most High has me. If we know he's an awesome father, then we need to start showing that as a people. Hallelujah. So in conclusion, if you like the content provided from Covenant Awakenings, please like, share, and subscribe. Also visit us at covenantawakenings.com where I just um, uploaded one of the newest versions of uh, Brother Christian's book. His book is a work in progress because guess what? As a people, we're still a work in progress. And guess what we're doing? We're he's he's just cataloging all the things that's happening. It's awesome to see how our community starts to catalog and writes things down for what the Most High needs us for. We're we're we're, we're doing our work in due season. So again, if you're a Patreon. Um, I, I appreciate you, you folks on Patreon. Um, I try to do a little, um, some, some, some things. I try to act, interact a little bit more. Um, I'll, I'll put up little articles. And I'll just give a little two or three sentence synopsis of the article and just say, look, this is what we're seeing. This is how we're seeing it. Now, this kind of comes on the heels of what I post on the Patreon about, um, the U.S. and Russia relations, especially in the, the Pacific. But it, it also highlights that there's still a lot of things that's happening and we should not discredit or discount anything. Because I'm telling you, the world's trying to, the world is trying to deal with getting back to normal. And this thing could always flip on a dime. And we know it will. Because here's the thing, when they say peace, peace, it's going to be sudden destruction. That's why when, when they say, well, we're getting things back to normal, that's when I, that's when I worry. Uh-oh, something's happening. <laughs> something's happening. So I also have my uh, Cash App. If you all would like to prov provide something on Cash App, I'd appreciate that. That's a blessing. But I know that the ultimate person, the ultimate source, my ultimate source, that's the most high. And and I, I do try to point people in the right direction for resources if they're if they're in need. I don't try to turn people away. There have been a couple of, of uh, requests of help in Cash App. And, and I put them into in the touch with with a couple of of our ministries and in particular uh, Kingdom Harbor. Harbinger with, uh, with Ron Shield. So so I, I know he has a robust infrastructure that can help our people out. So I also have updated my Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. And... Um, I'm not sure what other platforms are on out there that I can get on out to because there's a platform, a new one every minute. And especially within our community, which is a good thing, there's now HebrewConnect.tv. HebrewConnect.tv. And um, I know Teo's getting ready to make the move to DLive.com. So check that on out. Folks, DLive.com. So I'm not sure if he's going to do any type of uh, boosters on uh, his YouTube to kind of, 
you know, start, start pushing people on out there for his lives. Because here's, here's the thing, brothers and sisters, this, this, this awakening is bigger than actually what they thought and has grown exponentially. Just because folks don't actively participate doesn't mean that they're not awakened. Think about that. There are a lot of folks, a lot of Israelites. Okay, we see what that guy's doing. All right, I'm not going to be actively participating in what the elders are doing. You know, I'm just trying to survive, make these bricks, you know, work on this construction project. But I know. Okay. I, I see it. So, so brothers and sisters, that's all you have for me. Again, we're increasing knowledge every day. Um, every time I try to get on this platform, every time I try to speak with you all via Hebrew sphere or, or whatever platforms we have going on. So with that said, brothers and sisters, Shalom. Salama, Siemi, Shalom. Peace and blessings, Israel. <laughs>